Good morning, everyone. This is Diane. I am finally hard at work on my pansy journal. I worked so hard getting my spaces organized, and I have done that. I just need to kind of um, clean up the aftermath of that and be all ready to do a tour. But I really have been waiting to get going on this. So that's what I'm doing today. I started it yesterday, actually, when I had time, and I really... Um, love how it's going. Uh, I have trouble when I'm doing a fabric journal with um, getting started on it, but especially something like this with a quilted piece. This is an old quilt and I couldn't wrap it around without it being bulky, but we got it made. This is uh, this beautiful purple scroll print and I ironed it to a Pellon interfacing and then I just sewed it. I cut this to the size I wanted and then I cut the quilt and sewed it together with a zigzag stitch and I added this old crochet piece at the top. Oops, I didn't trim this off. And this lavender piece and this is vintage also at the front ends. And when I added the lavender I tucked this vintage ribbon in there to be a tie and it's a very soft vintage ribbon. It's not stiff and it's crumpled and I love it. And so I think this is a beautiful cover and then I added this flower and the leaves that I got at the flea or the estate sale where I got all the the fabric uh, a month or so ago. ago. So I think that looks really nice on there. I know it's not a pansy, but the colors work with it. So that's the cover. I wanted to show that to you. Um, what I did yesterday, in addition to making the cover, was Mod Podging some, my one uh, pansy napkin that I had. I made these three little tags. And there was one large image, so I put it on a bag. And then I needed two more bags. So I found these. This, these are both, this is a digital and this came out of a book. So I've got those pieces all set. And I had a scrap of wallpaper left. I put a small wallpaper page in each of the signatures and I had a little bit of it left. So I made this tag and then I punched some shapes out. You'll see them in a bit. Get those out of the way. Uh, you can see that I added lace and this leaf trim. Somebody sent this leaf trim to me, and it's not its not the Hobby Lobby product, um, because I've had that, and it's stiffer than this. This is softer. And it's a little bit fiddly to sew on because it wants to twist, but you just kind of straighten it out as you go and go nice and slow and stop when you need to. And the result is worth it, I think. I just sewed that on top of the lace. I've done the stenciling and some stamping. So now, I don't really know what I'm gonna do, actually. I don't have anything really planned out, except for one thing. Um, I have these yellow embossed pieces, and I cut them down to size. And these also came out of a book. That was one long strip. I'm just going to sew them to the top and make pockets out of these. And I already had this in my stash, so I'm going to use that for the third signature. I could just sew uh, glue, but I like the look of having stitched things.
going to sew this right on so I don't lose the piece. You know me. I like having a little bit of the top of the pocket showing. Kind of frames out the pansy piece. This embossed cardstock was just something I had in my stash. Um, I don't know if I did it with a scrapistry video when I was... I think I did one where I embossed some scrap pieces, so it might have been part of that, but I always keep some embossed pieces in my stash because I like to use the embossed cardstock for embellishments and pockets and things. So then I'm just going to add these to a piece of uh, a piece of the scrapbook paper as a pocket. I need lots of pockets because I have a lot of antique um, pansy postcards. I'm sure they won't all go in here. because, you know, putting antique postcards in has to raise the price of the journal. And there are, I have a lot of them. <laughs> so I'll save some for another journal. But I do want to include a lot. Pansies must have been very popular in the Victorian and Edwardian eras. And whoever decided what the flowers stand for decided that pansies stand for thoughts. So I think I will call this journal Thoughts of You. I got out my silk ribbon embroidery because, or silk ribbon, um, because I don't think to use it that often, hardly ever. So I thought maybe I could do something with it. This is. A variegated green. I think that's pretty. Maybe I'll just tie a little bow with it and glue it on. So I'll twist it up. With... I bought um, most of that um, uh, silk ribbon for doing silk ribbon embroidery in the 90s. And I did some of it. But this came from a rummage sale, or a yard sale, or Happy Mail or something. But I really like the variegated look of some of that green. I was going to make dolls stuffed dolls and do the silk embroidery on their dresses but I never did that that's just a cute little accent there I think I like that so I'll do some more of them and glue them on later just wanted to check it out pockets to their pages later because I want to continue doing figuring out what I'm going to do for the rest of the signature and you don't need to see me repeat the same thing all the time. I have these colorful doilies too. I thought maybe I could do something with one of them. I have my um, velvet ribbon and I've got all these little pieces of fabric strips and diamond shapes and squares and I took my flower petals. I don't know if you saw the video when I got these at a thrift store. It's a bag of rose petals. And I took some of them and colored them. I just rubbed Distress inks and Distress Oxide inks on my craft mat and wet them. 
had a couple colors of purple and a blue and then after it dried I added a little bit of yellow or orange I had to wait till it dried because it would just turn muddy if I put the yellow and orange in while the ink was still wet but they turned out pretty nice didn't they so I, I want to do something with them and I have these two little crocheted pansy bits and some digital elements and these came out of a book so let's figure out what we're going to do with all this I can put a word up here a little white edge on it it says spring but I could dress it up with something. have much lace uh, scrap left in my little bucket there because because of my scrapistry videos but I can actually get you know bigger pieces of lace to use is that too much on that page how about if I put it over here to see if I have a square in that darker fabric. I've got the strip. I could cut that into a square because I think the darker fabric would look better on this page. ink around this and I'm going to glue. I'm not going to sew that. I thought I was going to sew it but decided not to. I'm not doing a lot of distressing and inking in this journal because it's pansies and they're very fresh faced and bright and cheery. We don't want to dull it down too much but this just needs some uh, distinct distinction along the edges not exactly um, distressing just distinction well I got up to get my ink but I didn't grab my glue while I was up if I use fabric flips in here I was thinking of using these fabric pieces or the the doily pieces to do something at the top of the page instead of a fabric flip because these pansy pieces came cut like this and I really want to utilize them
That looks pretty. This, um, I should say, this Pansy digital kit is from um, Digital Fit, I think is what it's called. I will link it below. She has some fantastic digitals. I just looked at her site again, and I actually put um, a couple more in my cart. You know, I've said before I was trying not to use digital so much, but there are so many talented artists doing digital kits, so many beautiful things, and what's the difference between using a digital page or a scrapbooking page, really, right? I still make my own ephemera. A lot of the kits I get don't come with ephemera. This this one didn't. But anyway, um, I will link this kit below and then you can find her shop and I would recommend that you do so because you can see the beautiful things that she has. Um, she has a couple of Alice in Wonderland digital kits and one of them is a really beautiful blue and uh, they're not the original John Tennille illustrations but it is a very charming kit but there's another one that does use the original illustrations and uh, it's very baroque looking very elaborate frames around the images and I love it that's what I put in my cart so I didn't buy it and they're on sale right now and I'm not planning on making Alice in Wonderland right away but I have at least one or two Alice in Wonderland um, book covers to use. So I will be making Alice in Wonderland. So I think because the kits are very reasonably priced and they're on sale now, I might just go ahead and get those and save it. But I have so many digital kits that I haven't used yet. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do here. I haven't decided yet. Just playing. Just have this pretty vintage yellow lace, and I thought maybe I could scatter a couple of these petals around. These petals um, are all crumpled and folded from being in that bag, but I think they would melt if you tried to iron them. I did use my heat gun to dry the ink on them, and it didn't melt it. I'm just not sure. I want it to look like a petal and not just a blob of purple. So I think I need the pointy end to show. I'm not liking that though. Maybe I won't use these. I don't know. I like the way they look. I like the color. But like I said, I don't want it to just look like a blob. I don't know. Not liking it. I want to do something down this edge.
I just can't do it. I'm not liking it. I'm disappointed. But this lace is pretty. I don't want to create a pansy with those petals. I just wanted to scatter petals. Maybe just having a petal peeking out from that stamp. That looks okay. I'm going to ink around the stamp because I cut it, it's a digital, and I cut it out with my stamp scissors, but it leaves a little bit of white you don't cut it close enough. I put some barely there glue in little spots around that petal because I don't want it to show through, but I wanted to glue it down so it wouldn't wrinkle more. It does show a little bit. I want to have at least two postcard pockets. And I can probably put a postcard in one of these bags too. I have these pockets that were in my stash already cut um, and I have these digitals that I want to add to them. This is too small for a postcard, I think. Let me get my postcards and see. And it might fit if I sew really close to the edge. See if I have a wider pocket. Oh, I have this one too. Maybe I could use that instead. I think that's cute.
was thinking about making some kind of a belly band too, but I don't know. Tags that wouldn't need such a wide pocket. But I thought it would be nice to have a, an antique postcard at the beginning and the end of each signature. See if I can do something with this. Wait, I had something I was going to do with my diamonds. I was thinking of arranging a diamond with a couple of the squares and maybe putting it at the top of a page. stick out the top. Or I could do it down the side. I think I like that better. Yeah, I like that better. Told you I didn't know what I was going to be doing today. sew this down first <coughs> and then maybe I can just sew some of that silk ribbon down there this up along here and see how it looks. nice. That's cool, isn't it? I like that.
Now we have a pocket here and a tuck spot behind. Just going to cut this purple one off. There is a purple thread connecting it to the gold, so I'm trying to just snip that off, but the stitching is very tight, which is good. It should be. This one has a blue thread connecting. If I can just cut the connecting thread, then I won't be... disrupting the crochet, but maybe I am. But that's okay, because we just sew it down. It seals up the ends that we cut. Or glue. Put a little piece of fabric behind that doily. So it would be a fabric flip. I like that. Let's try it. I think I like the gingham though. Gingham and doilies just seem to go together. Or I mean gingham and pansies. I think the same thing with strawberries too. Gingham and <coughs> strawberries. edge. <clears throat> Sorry. This happened to my voice yesterday, too. I was talking to my son on the phone. Just went away. I tore off the folded under edge because I'm not going to iron. <laughs> is what I was trying to say. I'm going to sew that um, paper down.
And then you can put a picture or something underneath that. I'll have to cover up the back of this because it's damaged from being glued into a scrapbook. Let's see, I have a lot of uh, digital images. I think I brought them over here. Oh, no I didn't. And stickers, I have stickers. Maybe I'll just put a sticker on this page. I'm gonna leave you the writing room. This is about that building and it's Penzance in Cornwall. I guess I didn't really know it was a real place. Steeped in history and immortalized by Gilbert and Sullivan in the Pirates of Penzance, Penzance in Cornwall is the most westerly of English towns. Interesting. This page is from a book called England is a Garden. I was going to put something on that, but I don't know if I will. Maybe I'll just clip something to that page and you can glue it down if you want to. I think I don't need to do a lot to these journals, to this journal. And I have, well, I did want to add an eyelet pocket if I could. I have two pockets plus the glassine bag in this one signature. could put a pocket on the back of this page. This is not pansies. And I've got my wide eyelets here. I was going to look for one that I could use. I think it would look better, maybe, if I put a piece of paper on top of all, the, all of that pattern. Maybe I'll just get a piece of yellow copy paper or something like that. I'll be right back.
I'm back. Sorry. While I was in there getting my copy paper, I saw this lined paper and I thought maybe that would be nice. So you would actually have lines to write on. I like it on the yellow. I think we'll just go ahead and use the lined. There's lots of lined sheets in this digital kit. We might as well just keep making it easy to write. I'm going to have to go pretty soon, aren't I? through the paper it's thin enough so what I'm going to do is glue this down to the back to this page and then sew this right across and it will be a pocket on both sides but for now I'm going to turn the camera off and I will keep working and we'll see we'll see what happens with the next video whether it'll just be the final flip through or if I have more to show you thanks for watching today and I will see you soon have a creative day today Bye-bye.